Okay, so now that I've calibrated all four of these axes, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up a basic move. So I'm going to use my slider to go down here to the far end. These are tilt to our pan. Set our focus. Now when you're ready to record a keyframe, all four of these you see are colored red. That means you're going to record a keyframe for all four axes. If you do not want to record a keyframe for any one of these, you'll need to go back to the axis you do not want to record a keyframe for and unselect it. But we are going to go ahead and record all of them, so I'll hit the record keyframe and you'll notice that there's four dots up here uh, on the screen. Now if you leave your uh, timeline cursor to the far left and record a second keyframe, it's going to throw it up at the end. So I'll show you how that will be done. So I'm going to tilt up, I'll pan back, I'll bring my slider all the way to the far left. And I'm going to refocus on my subject. And I'm just going to hit record keyframe. Now you see it threw it up at the far end. If you wanted to record those at a specific point, you can easily do that just by sliding the uh, timeline slider in any one position. And it will record those points at the position of the slider. And I can demonstrate that as well. So we're going to need to right click on the nodes and we are going to click delete all. And what we'll do is move this back to the beginning and I'll just record my current position as my keyframe. Come to here and I will move our slider out of the end. Bring our tilt down. Our back pan and adjust our focus. Record keyframe. And then we'll go to the end. We'll just do a three keyframe move here. Adjust our focus. Bring our slider here to the middle. Tilt down. Sorry, readjust focus and hit record keyframe. So now that we have these basic um, paths here, we can adjust those. They have a slight bit of curve already adjusted to them because that was that uh, 30, uh, 30 value in your motor configuration. That's the smoothing. But if you want to adjust that, you're going to right click. Oh, I'm sorry, on the selected axis, you'll have to right click. And you notice here I have the timeout checked off. If the timeout is checked on, after 10 seconds of no activity, it will um, lock out your node so you don't accidentally uh, move those. But I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it. And we're going to unlock the handles. Double click on it and now with the handles you can make adjustments here to your curve. And if you notice the curve won't let me go up and down, only in and out. This is our smoothing feature. So if I select our slider, I can better demonstrate this. We're going to right click and right now we have um, cusp unchecked. So if I click cusp, double click on it, you can see that I can move the curve independently up and down and left to right. If I right click and turn cusping off, you can see it locks my handles to only move them in and out in the smoothing uh, some more of a symmetrical curve. And if I right click again and click link handles, you'll see that it will now move them equally on each side, not independently like I had before. So I'm going to unlink the handles. Also you notice that I cannot change the position of this node. If I want to, I right click and I can unclick all. I'm sorry. Uh, unclick lock vertical. Now I can move it vertically but not horizontally. If I unclick lock horizontal, it allows me to move the position in time but not the actual position itself. So that would be your horizontal movement. 
Uh, you also have delete, which if you click delete, that will delete the single node. Uh, this will delete the whole access path, and delete all will delete everything. So obviously we don't want to do that right now. Before we play through this move, I want to go over some features here below the graph. We have initial time, which what that is, is if you notice at the top is your timeline. Currently, because we have it set to 30 seconds over here, it's going to read from 0 to 30 seconds. If we were doing a time lapse, and let's say we do a two hour time lapse, so we'll change the, the uh, hour setting to two hours. You'll notice now the timeline reads from zero to two hours. But if I'm starting a time lapse at 10 o'clock, and I know precisely I want uh, to record a keyframe, let's say at uh, 11 o'clock, I can change uh, this time here to let's say 10 p.m. and activate it. Now you'll notice that the timeline reads from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. So if you want to come over here and record a keyframe at specifically 11 o'clock because you know of an event that will happen at 11 o'clock, you can make sure that you have uh, the position of that keyframe, which we can even do that right now. So we can go back into the tilt and adjust the tilt to what I'll want it at at exactly 11 o'clock in this position and turn off uh, slider, turn off pan, turn off focus, and click record keyframe and you'll notice it through a keyframe up here. So that can be a useful tool. We're going to go ahead and delete that keyframe out and it'll put things back the way that was. Uh, position time is just going to show you uh, the time of wherever the position this cursor is at. So it's just kind of a nice readout to get into a specific, like let's say you wanted 1115 Obviously, by looking at the top up here, you cannot see that, so you'll pay attention to this data box down here. And if you notice at the end, it goes white, and that's because it goes to AM. So right now we're in a PM, so it'll show up as black, and as you cross over into 12 AM right at the very end, it turns white. You have a uh, your percentage of your move and time remaining in the move. You have your time lapse. Uh, check button and what that will do is when you have a time lapse set up which we'll get to in a minute uh, we will uh, or that will activate whatever settings that you have set up over here to the right of that you have your headlight button and if you're operating in dark conditions and you just need a light uh, you can click this to turn on the headlight Okay, so I just want to demonstrate the scrub feature really quick. Uh, when you check this, it engages uh, your timeline cursor to scrub through the motion. So if you need to move it in any one of these positions to just check location, uh, you can do that to get to the exact position and see if, it's, see if you're happy with that location. Okay, so that pretty much concludes everything that's going to take place up in your graph area of the software. So we'll just go ahead and go through uh, some of these other features here. So we'll start down here in basic. This is where you can click uh, reverse to keyframe, rapid to keyframe, reverse to home, and rapid home. So what home is is actually the mark begin point when you set up your calibrations. So they would just go to all of those mark begin points. Uh, to go to your first keyframe, uh, would be the actual first position of your move. So what we want to do is uh, we'll just wrap it to the keyframe. So if we click that, it's just going to very quickly in a straight line get back to the first uh, keyframe that you recorded and all the selected axis. The reverse to keyframe will be where it, wherever it's at in that move, it will reverse itself uh, in the same way that it would play forward back to the beginning. Uh, looping. Uh, Basically, it's just what it sounds like. Uh, it's just going to, uh, after it completes its move, you have the choice of rapiding to the first keyframe and then playing again, uh, or you have loop after reverse to home. So it would play the move, go to home, and then just continuously loop. Uh, you have then the choice to choose one, uh, to loop one time or to loop continuously. Uh, under the delay tab, 
Uh, this is where you can set up a, either a, a countdown timer. So if you want a move to start in, let's say, two hours, you can just set, uh, check the delay timer and set it to two hours and then hit play and it would take your two hours to, to start. Or you can just uh, select a date and time and select that here and then click play and it'll have your countdown. So if it's three days and two hours away, it'll show up here and count down. In the middle here is your overall runtime. Uh, we briefly uh, talked about that earlier. And we're just going to adjust this to something more realistic for us. And we'll go up here to the top. Well, let's just talk about the home. So this is a mark begin, mark in. We've gone through that in the calibration phase. You have a recorded keyframe button, which we've talked about when setting up the move. Uh, play and stop are uh, obvious what they do, and then you have uh, save and notes. Uh, notes is a very handy tool. If you have a sp uh, particular move that you want to save, it's also wise to save what hardware in the setup that you had. So you could put in three foot semi slider. My calibration was two inches from the left to 30 inches at the end. Uh, I set up a pan tilt head, and because we have the fixed degree wheels, you can say that my bottom limit on the tilt was 22 degrees and my top was 87 degrees or basically anything that pertains to your setup you can write that in here and that when you uh, that note will be saved permanently to the actual uh, move that you saved so those will be uh, linked together uh, under time lapse um, you basically this is where uh, you can set up your exposure. So if you're shooting a manual mode or any other mode other than bulb mode on your camera, you'll want to first test fire and you can uh, use this button here to test fire your camera if you have it plugged into one of the camera ports on any of the axis uh, controls. Uh, so you'll want to fire the camera first and find out how long it's taking to make its exposure. Now if it's something variable like aperture priority or auto, you'll want to take into consideration what the longest setting will be throughout your run. So you'll want to set this exposure window time to match that or exceed that of what your camera is going to take. If you're in bulb mode, this will actually control your camera. So if you want a two second exposure, you would just set this to two seconds and you will have uh, your, you know, it'll expose your, your, cam uh, your sensor for two seconds. The delay is how long the unit will sit idle for, or I should say your camera sits idle for, in between each exposure. Uh, this is also the time that during shoot, move, shoot that the camera will move to its next position. Uh, photos here, uh, let's say we wanted to take, uh, so let's just set this down to a one second uh, exposure, a two second delay, and we'll jump this up to like three minutes and 30 seconds. Type in 15 and you'll see that I have uh, the time set to three minutes and 30 seconds, but this cycle may not fit into that. So if you collect over here on the time lapse that enables that and you'll see that the time now jumped to 45 seconds. So basically what that's telling you is with the time lapse engaged, uh, this is going, your, your cycle time that you have set here is going to uh, directly affect the overall runtime. So if I change 15 exposures to 30 exposures and hit enter, you can see I'm now 1 minute 30 seconds. If you want to uh, adjust by time, as you increase time, you'll see that your photos are increasing. So if you don't care uh, how many photos you have, but you know you wanted to take, let's say, exactly one hour, uh, you just adjust this to one hour and it will tell you how many photos you're going to have. Uh, continuous and shoot, move, shoot. So these are the two different methods of shooting time lapse. Continuous is it's going to evenly take uh, however many photographs you have selected over the, the course of the move, but the move will never stop. It'll be moving extremely slow, uh, but it will never stop. This typically will give you a slight amount of motion blur in the photo, but will be more, uh, I guess, r uh, realistic to traditional video as to where shoot, move, shoot will stop the camera, take the photo, and then move to the next uh, position, stop and uh, take the next photo. Uh, this will typically give you more of a hyper real look uh, to your time lapse and could potentially, if you don't take enough photos, look somewhat um, jerky. So use this uh, option carefully. Now we're going to uh, go on to stop motion. And on the screen here that you, ha you see you have a, a reverse and forward button, a take a picture button, 
and your exposure time. If you want us to uh, control your exposure, you can set that up here so when it does fire, it's to your setting. Um, most of the time for stop motion, you'll just let your camera do the uh, exposure and camera. Uh, photos, how many uh, photographs that you want uh, to be taken over the course of the move. Uh, your current frame will tell you position and your go-to frame, so if you want to back up or go to a specific uh, position frame, say, you know, frame number five or frame number seven, you can type that in there and it will travel to that position. Uh, you have auto advance. With auto advance on, as soon as you take a photograph, it will move to the second position and then you'll take it again and it'll go to the third or, and then fourth and fifth. If you want to manually advance, you can do that. Without taking photos, you can just uh, step between the different positions and also back up to the different positions. Three, two, one. Okay, that pretty much concludes um, all the different features that we currently have uh, functioning in the KOS software. Uh, obviously, uh, this is a, uh, an early release product, so there will be uh, many more updates and features to be turned on in the future.